Can they dance or like to move? Y'all this cute <laughs> asked me to bust <laughs> moves. What's you guys family? My name is Lita Debora and here on my channel I make thrift DIY and style related videos. So if you like that kind of content, like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're always in the know. All right, let's get some measurements. So I've tied some string um, around my waist and I'm measuring my waist and we're going to divide that by four. Next, I'm measuring my under bust, also dividing that by four. And then this is where that underwire is going to run. So from that top, tippity top part to the waist, and that's why we have the string. From the waist of my pants to my crotch, I'm going to measure that waist to bust or bust to waist measurement. And I added three inches to that. And I marked at two different points because at the nine inch mark, I just really wanted a lot of seam allowance because I did not want to fail. And at that seven inch mark, I just wanted to know where to fold the fabric to sew. And on the sides, I'm also marking nine inches. So that top part there is going to be the underbust and the waist is going to still be the waist. <laughs> now your underbust measurement divided by four is what you are marking here. For me, that was seven and a half inches. So seven and a half inches on each side. That's why you divided it by four. Now you're doing the same thing for your waist measurement. Waist divided by four, measure that on each side. From each of those points, I am adding a quarter inch for seam allowance. Right, now we've marked waist to bust. And you see those circles? That's where I'm actually going to cut to, or that's where I've, I should have cut to. I don't know why I cut it so high on the side. So you see that again, that was where I was supposed to cut but yeah anyway here it is cut and i'm going to just turn it so that the right sides are facing each other and look at this i realized that it was very much off center uh, and later on in the video i came up with a solution to that so just keep watching all right with the right sides facing each other i pin and i sew so the leather was really thick all right, first of all here I'm just burning the edges um, because the lining of the fabric was fraying and that kind of keeps it from fraying but the fabric was so thick I didn't realize it was real leather my machine could not handle that so what I did was I cut off one layer on each side so that the machine needle could pass through it easier I ended up eventually going to the store to get needles meant for sewing leather <laughs> anyway here's the bra and we're going to cut out the cups from our bra the cup as well as the band is that what you call it the waistband the part that goes around your body i don't know i haven't worn a bra since like 2015. here i'm measuring the length that i wanted my underbust corset to be and that's where i'm going to set my the remainder of my bra <laughs> and i'm going to proceed to trace that shape because that's what we want to do okay and it should look like this when you're done. Like this, like that, right, there it is. <laughs> all right, so once you've done this step, you're going to take your ruler, your measuring tape and measure. All right, well, I measured one inch all the way around, but I later felt that that was a bit too much. So you could probably go for about three quarters of an inch and that will still be enough. Anyway, mark that all the way around, just like you see me doing here. And once you've done that, you're just going to connect all those dots. And yes, I am using an eye pencil because it works. So now it looks like this. You're going to cut out the fabric like I'm doing in the video because we don't need it. That's where our titties are gonna hang out. And it looks like this so now you see that i had a lot of excess fabric there but i had planned to fold it twice and then sew but seeing as it was just way too thick it wasn't working over my machine i just folded it over once so i cut off all that excess now to the needle and thread 
we're going to use this to hem around those edges because they're curved it's a bit tricky and this is what is going to help us to get that curve and to get the fabric to fold along the curve so halfway between the edge of the fabric and that mark you're going to stitch all the way around like this now you're going to gently tug on that thread and as you're tugging you're also going to even it out so it's not all bunched up this is going to allow the fabric to fold at the curves so while I'm tugging and evening out the fabric I'm also folding it over because you'll see as you do it yourself it's you get it um, I will say this my prototype when I did a prototype I used denim and it was a whole lot easier to work with I did not know that working with leather was this tricky but if you use this video and you use denim to do this project instead trust me it's going to be a whole lot easier anyway if you look at what I'm doing I'm just yeah pulling that thread trying to get the fabric to fold in the curves as neatly as possible and pinning as I go along. That's basically what I'm doing. And with all my pins in place, it's ready to sew. I did that and now I can remove the thread. So I just cut off the knot and gently pull on the thread again to pull it all the way out. And here it is. Let me turn that inside out so you can see what it looks like. And it was at this point that I realized that one inch was a bit too much. But you're going to repeat the process, this time stitching on the line. And again do the exact same thing and now back to our bra remainders and we're going to dissect it further we're going to remove the inner bone that's what it's called I think you're going to take that bone out from your bra and insert that into your underbust corset like so Yeah, it was giving me some trouble. Yeah. But eventually, I got it through because I persevered. And now we're ready to repeat the exact same thing on the other side. And when that's done and the bones are inserted on both sides, it looks like this. So now what you want to do is run a stitch right there to close that out so the bones don't go peeking out. And now we're ready to hem along the top as well. So. I then realized that my bone was poking all the way up so I wasn't able to fold the fabric and I decided to cut off just about one inch of the bone. So I just measured an inch and used this tool, these pliers, yeah, to cut it off. That's all I did on both sides. Watch me do it again in case you didn't get it the last time, the first time. <laughs> Yo, the sun is hot today. It's fried my brain. I spent, I don't know, hours outside taking photos and video footage for this video. So I really hope you're going to enjoy this and find this one a good one. All right, so now that I'm done, I'm just going to push that back in there so everything is in place. And now we can proceed to sew. Um, but what I decided to do first was just use that stitch on my machine that resembles an overlock stitch just to get it neat because again the leather was too thick for me to fold over twice like I originally wanted to so I just folded it over once and yeah that's how I'm going to sew it right here I'm going to leave that part open all right so with it sewn I tried it on and I'm now measuring for the straps because honestly didn't know how else to do that part all right, so let's jump to this back situation that got messed up. I decided to insert some eyelets and make it a whole lace-up look. Because as you can see, that was really just off-center. So I'm cutting right there along that seam. So we first of all get rid of that seam so it's not going to be a dead giveaway that I totally failed when I cut this out. 
<laughs> and I'm folding it over matching the seams on the sides and cutting off the excess uh, cloth or the excess fabric that way what is left is going to be even on both sides all right so I'll just fold that and sew along the edges as well to get a nice clean hem or a nice clean edge and now we're ready well almost ready to insert these first of all I have to figure out where to insert them so first I tried spacing them out one inch apart and then I looked at it and felt like it was too close so then I just did one inch from the top and from there I measured one and a half inches And I think that last hole ended up being about two inches uh, because if I had done one and a half it would have ended up right on that seam and I didn't feel like that would look right so now I'm ready to insert my eyelets and eyelets I think they're called eyelets yeah but at this point I myself had to watch tutorial to figure out how to do it and even after a tutorial I was kind of confused but luckily the brand had their own tutorial so I looked at that and it helped a lot more but here I'm just opening a hole so I'm cutting kind of like a tiny X like this I don't know if you can tell that it is an X but I promise you it is it absolutely is I know my alphabet okay so now we're going to insert the part that looks like a tiny top hat see like that and that part is inserted from the top of the fabric so that's what's going to be visible from the outside or it's going to be visible yeah so I'm just going to push that through the hole and then it comes up on the other side but because of the lining again it gets kind of frayed so I pull out my lighter and burned it a little bit to get rid of all the threads all right nice so it came with this little round black thing that i guess was for me to set it on because we're going to do some pounding afterwards and now i'm going to pick up the other side and i'm trying to show you here that there's a groove in this little eyelet that's what i'm trying to show you with the um, with the seam ripper and you can see it a bit better here either way that part goes down it goes facing the fabric i know i got this nifty tool luckily it came with the package otherwise i don't know how i would have put all this together but anyway i'm just going to slip that underneath and make sure both parts of the eyelet fit in there and then tap 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 we're going to give it a pounding and if you did it right it should stick a bit of an earthquake as i pound and let's see yes it worked now I'm going to repeat this on all of the holes or all the dots yes no to the straps I really didn't measure the width I kind of just eyeballed it and make sure that both sides were even in width and length folded it over pinned it and then sewed it together as simple as that After I sewed and turned it right side out, it looked like this and it's kind of rounded and bulky, not so awesome. And then there's this one, which looks a lot flatter and a lot neater. And that's because I sewed about one eighth of an inch from the edges. I sewed a stitch on both sides. So that really helped to flatten it and make it look just a lot smoother and neater. So that's the finish product or that's the end result for my straps then I pinned them on sewed and laced it up and look at this <laughs> look at this and look Benny. at this decided to join yeah Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Benny decided to be in the frame that morning so yeah here it is and I think it looks rather cute if you ask me but let's put it on and see how it looks on the body because that's what's important like hello and she is doing the most hey okay okay bon, 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 bon. uh-huh work give them work and face and 
purse. And the category is... Snatched. Waste is snatched. Okay. I swear I play too much. <laughs> let me let you guys enjoy this. <laughs> All right, that's all for today's video and I'll be seeing you next week. But until then, take care and bye-bye.